Okay, I just want to say that in this talk, there's not going to be anything that's funny, okay? So, I'm serious. It's, it's really not going to be funny. Well, these are, these are actually kind of cute. <laughs> but other than that, it's all serious. Okay, so... <clears throat> okay, start timing me now. Just kidding. So, that wasn't funny. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so I'm actually going to just talk about a little piece of code that's really helped me out a lot at work lately, and um, a lot with Quickie, and a lot with Spork. It was a godsend. It's called, I'm calling it um, Document Formatter. It'll be on CPAN tonight. It comes with Document Parser, Document AST, and Document Emitter. So they're all base classes, and you have to, um, you, you have to subclass them a little bit. But let me show you how that easy that is and uh, what neat things you can do. So <clears throat> um, these are the actual Spork Parser and Spork Emitter HTML are the two things that I used to produce this and the other talk the other day. So here's a sample slide. It consists of a, a, a heading with equals equals. Here's some markup, um, and then underneath that, there's more markup. So what you do is the parser would, you know, you break it into these chunks, these block-level chunks, and then actually, this is a list inside of a list. So you strip off this little section of um, stars right here, and then you reparse it. And you go, okay, that doesn't have any stars, so that's just an li. This is a sublist, so I reparse that, and then, it, and then I get down to... Um, what I call phrase level stuff. So I break stuff into texts and italic phrases or bold phrases and it's really just that simple. So um, <clears throat> uh, here, here's the usage of it. So uh, it's a two-step process to convert something, but the, the great thing is you have an intermediate form that you can really turn into anything. So I wouldn't have to um, emit to HTML, say I could emit to PDF or Microsoft Word doc or whatever, that kind of thing, um, pod. Etc. <clears throat> so let me just show the, the parser. This is the actual parser that was used to create these slides. So you can see we have a Spork parser. It's a su this isn't funny, by the way. It's not funny. This is a, a base class of document parser. Um, you, you give it the AST that you want to set. So we're going to call it AST tree. Um, and then what you define is, so these are all the blocks. I have bold, indenting, teletype, and this highlighting feature that I was using yesterday. I have indented blocks, centered blocks, um, H2s, ULs, pre's, and p's. I actually wrote this as I was going just for what I needed. I mean, I could add more features, but this is exactly what I needed. So the parser always starts with top, and it says, OK, top contains any of all blocks. OK, um, one of those things is center, so center contains all of blocks, and it matches this. Now, the interesting thing about these regexes is, is that it will eat the whole match but then whatever's in $1 will be used to subparse. So if you, put, you have to put your parentheses in the right place. But other than that, all you are doing, <clears throat> oh, and also the text, um, if you want to, like to strip off those stars for, for um, let's say for list down here, I needed to supply a filter that just stripped off the stars before I did the reparse. That's the whole thing. So, um, oh, this is a little thing to generate some fancy regexes that I call huggy regexes where they have to be on word boundaries. Other than that, you just define this structure, and it defines the whole parser for you. That's, it turns out this is very flexible. <clears throat> I, can, um, I, can, I can use this for, it's not, it's not for anything like parsing a programming language, but it's very good for things that are linear, where you have okay, a set of lines, a set of lines, a set of lines, a set of lines, and then you want to break those down into further chunks after that. Um, I, I'll use it for Quickie for Spork. I'm going to write a pod thing. And in a new version of Quickie, you'll be able to actually request any page in a myriad of formats and actually edit them in the format you like. So maybe if you like MediaWiki, you could just request the page in MediaWiki format, edit it. But then, it, you know, as, as long as the intermediate document model is the same, I can switch into and out of all of those formats. So um, I hope this is useful for you. Thank you. <clears throat>